But you, brothers and sisters, are not in darkness so that this day should surprise you like a thief. We're looking for it. We should not be surprised by it. If it's ever before your eyes that Christ is coming, He's coming for His bride, He's coming for us, that when it comes, it shouldn't be like a thief to the church. We know the seasons we're in. We know the wars and rumors of wars. We know the one world government system that's being set up. We know that what is happening on the planet with all of the birth pangs and the wars and the destruction and the, and the uh, convulsions of the planet. Right? So we know that as it's toward the end of the season that we should not be surprised. The day should not surprise you like a thief. You are all children of the light and children of the day. We do not belong to the night or to the darkness. So then, let us not be like others who are what? Asleep, but let us be awake and sober. Jesus is coming. I believe he's coming soon. I don't know the day or the hour, but I sure think we're in the season. Now learn this lesson from the fig tree. As soon as its branches become tender and sprout leaves, you know that the summer is near. So also when you see all these things, you will know that he is what? Near right at the door the near approach of his coming will be known by many who's the many the church we don't know the day or the hour but we certainly know it's approaching not only that but the symbology of a fig tree is the nation of israel 1946 47 48 what happened the nation of israel was birthed so from that point on to the generations above, we're real close, folks. It's the season. Israel's back in the land. They just now need their temple to be erected. And that's already in a stage where they've got the Levites set. They've got everyone schooled in how to run and operate the tabernacle. They're ready to go. They're missing one thing. Before all that, they need the ashes of a red heifer. The watchword for us is to be alert. Know that these signs are here. Know that they're coming. Know of the Lord's return. Now when these things begin to take place, straighten up and raise your heads up because your redemption is drawing near. If you knew that Jesus was coming back within the next few years, what would you do? Right now, most Christians are doing nothing. We should be reaching the lost. People are going into an eternal hell, and we're happy to be safe going to heaven. Something's wrong there. We need to be doing the Lord's work. That's why he's still high priest and hasn't returned yet, so that more people will be saved. The high priest was called the thief in the night. When Jesus would make reference, or Paul would make reference to the coming of the Lord as the thief in the night, the reference is to the high priest who's checking on the priests who are supposed to be keeping the lamps lit. If a priest fell asleep on duty, not watching the fire on the brazen altar, the high priest would show up, find him sleeping on the job. He would take hot coals off the altar and scoop them with a shovel and dump the coals on the priest's garments. The priest who fell asleep would awaken by the smell of hot burning coals on his own garments. He'd immediately strip off his clothes as fast as he could to prevent from being burned. At the end of his shift, the other priests would see him naked without a garment, and he would be ashamed. This is because all the other priests would know that he was caught falling asleep on the job. Behold, I am coming like a thief. Blessed is the one who stays awake, keeping his garments on, that he may not go about naked and being seen exposed.
Ghost. Jesus is the high priest who is coming. He's the thief in the night. We better not be asleep. I don't want to end up in the fire. Saved people need to be fully aware of the season we are in. Not falling asleep, but being on duty. This world is going to hell. This world is perverse. This world is blind and lost. They need the church to lead them to Christ. That is what we're supposed to be doing. God, in my understanding of Scripture, God's not going to take us out when times get worse. That's when He needs His church to go in. How many of you saw 9-11, the firemen go in while everybody's running out? That's the church. We're supposed to be going into this situation to save whom we will because we're already saved. I overcame the, the devil by the blood of the Lamb, the word of my testimony, and not loving my life even unto death. I'll do anything I can. You'll do anything you can to reach the lost and to save another soul. Because Jesus is the thief in the night coming to see if his church has faith and the oil burning. When he blows the trumpet, the king will arrive. And we should not be taken by surprise, but ready to ride with him. There are two resurrections, a first one and a second one. What is a resurrection? The dead in Christ will rise, their bodies changed into immortal. Anybody alive on the earth will be transformed, they're changed, and will put on their resurrected body, meeting the Lord in the air. That's the first resurrection. There is a second resurrection, that is of all those who will appear before God's white throne judgment, those who have never been removed from sin, those who never accepted the sacrifice of Christ, they will stand before the white throne judgment of God and they will be sent to hell for eternity. God, I have failed you over and over by passing by people that your spirit prompted me to talk to. Forgive me, Jesus. May I follow the prompting of the Lord every day May I say something to somebody about Jesus? May we witness as much as we can with the love of God, bringing them into the grace and mercies of the Lord. For these people are suffering. They're blind and dead in sin. And you are a high priest. You're waiting to come as king, but you're ministering every day, all night long, praying that more souls will be saved and your church is in the harvest field. Prompt us, I pray, God. May we be aware of the trumpets that are coming and assemble ourselves as the people of God ready to go to war against the devil and to gather the lost into salvation. If this, if this convicts you tonight, would you change you're thinking and begin to realize, I must reach souls. I pray this for each one of us. Holy Spirit, don't let up on us. We have enough. Now let us go get people. In Jesus' name, amen. Sin separates us from God because God is perfect and holy and we are not. Adam and Eve sinned in the garden that separated humanity for all the generations since Adam so that sin needed to be paid for and, and God in his love and grace sent his only begotten son into the world to die on the cross, to take the judgment, to take the punishment for our sin and rise again from death, proving that his sacrifice was acceptable to God. And when we repent and believe and confess our sins to him and ask for forgiveness, he reconciles us back to God. We receive his imputed righteousness God counts us as righteous because he sees us through Christ's finished work and that we are reconciled back to God in union and fellowship with him, adopted into his family. And that is the amazing message of the gospel. Not only will we have an eternity of 
life in him after we die in this physical body. He's saved from the torment and the horrors of hell, which is where sinners go if they die in their sins. He saves us from all of that, but also that life with him begins now, and that to, from today we receive his salvation and begin our relationship with him, reborn, regenerated, a new creation in Christ, ready to serve him for the rest of our days here with real purpose and hope, and we can share his good news with those around us who need that salvation gift too. The hour is late, folks. This is not time for us to mess around, and I say that to myself. This is time to get into his word, to grow in him, to receive that salvation from sin by grace through faith alone. God bless you all, and take care. The king is coming. The season and time is short. It is near.